All India Radio presents Morning News. Good morning, I'm Sanjay Mattu. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi begins his two-day visit to eastern Uttar Pradesh today to launch several development projects in Azamgarh, Varanasi and Mirzapur districts. Defence Minister Nirmala Sitaraman says S-400 Triumph missile deal with Russia will go ahead despite US sanctions. In Pakistan, at least 133 people killed and over 200 injured in two separate attacks on political rallies in Baluchistan and Pakhtunkhwa ahead of 25 July general elections. Pakistani authorities arrest former Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif and his daughter Maryam on corruption charges. And in sports, PV Sindhu to play women's single semi-finals of Thailand Open World Tour Badminton Super 500 Tournament in Bangkok. In Wimbledon Tennis Championships, Kevin Anderson sails into final of men's singles, defeating John Isner in a record-breaking semi-final. Prime Minister Narendra Modi begins his two-day visit to eastern Uttar Pradesh today. He laid the foundation stone of the ambitious 304-kilometer-long Purvanchal Expressway and inaugurates several other development projects in Azamgarh. Our correspondent reports that Mr. Modi's visit is aimed at rapid development not only of these districts but of the state as a whole. Purvanchal Expressway will start from Chan Sarai area near NH56 in Lucknow and end at Hadaria in district Gazipur. It will also be connected to Varanasi through a separate link road. Once completed, the Purvanchal Expressway will provide uninterrupted connectivity to nine districts of Lucknow, Gazipur, Amethi, Azamgarh, Faizabad, Barabanki, Mau, Ambedkar Nagar and Sultanpur and would provide direct access to National Capital Delhi via Lucknow, Agra Express. And Yamuna Sushil Chandra Tiwari, AIR News, Later in the day, the Prime Minister will dedicate the Varanasi City Gas Distribution Project and flag off the Varanasi Balia EMU train. Besides, he'll also lay the foundation stone of the Panchakoshi Parikrama Road and several projects under the Smart City Mission and Namami Gange Mission and an international convention centre. Among his other programs in Varanasi are addressing a public meeting at Raja Talab, speaking to a gathering of intellectuals and attending the function of a book release, Meri Kashi, by Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath. After staying at his parliamentary constituency tonight, Mr. Modi will visit Mirzapur tomorrow. He'll dedicate the Bansagar Canal project to the nation. Defence Minister Nirmala Sitaraman has said the S-400 Triumph air defence missile deal with Russia will go ahead despite the US sanctions on military transactions with Moscow. Ms. Sitaraman was talking to reporters in New Delhi yesterday, referring to the Countering America's Adversaries Through Sanctions Act, under which the Trump administration has imposed sanctions on military deals with Russia. She said it's an American law and not a UN law, and India has conveyed its position on the issue to the United States. In reply to another question, the minister said India has conveyed to Russia that it will not be a part of the project now to develop a fifth-generation fighter aircraft and may join the program at a later stage. The defense minister has said that the 2 plus 2 dialogue between India and the United States is expected to take place in September. The dialogue was scheduled for July 6 in Washington, but it was postponed by the U.S. as Secretary of State Michael Pompeo had to travel to North Korea. External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj and Defence Minister Sita Raman will take part in the talks in the United States. External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj will today embark on a two-day visit to Manama to co-chair the second High Joint Commission meeting with a Bahraini counterpart. During the visit, Mrs. Swaraj will inaugurate the new Chancery Building Complex and address the Indian community. In the past four years, the BJP-led NDA government has taken many farmer-friendly initiatives with the objective of doubling their income by increasing farm output. One such scheme, launched by the central government in 2015, is the Pradhan Mantri Krishi Sanchai Yojana. The scheme aims to increase farm productivity through its various components like accelerated irrigation benefit program, Har Khet Kopani and more crop per drop. Maharashtra is witnessing some glorious irrigation success after the implementation of the scheme. Here's a ground report from a Mumbai correspondent. 
in Maharashtra. The center is funding about 134 irrigation projects and the results are already showing. A farmer, Rashid Gavit from Nandurbar district said the scheme helped in irrigating neighboring farms. In 2017, I was able to get a lot of money from the first time. I was able to get a lot of money from the first time. पानी की बहुत ही किल्लत हुई है हमारे जिले में और प्रधानमंत्री सिंचाई योजना के तहत मुझे डबल मुनाफा हुआ वी ऑल्सो स्पोक टू नंदुरबार कलेक्टर डॉक्टर मल्लीनाथ काल शेटी अबाउट द स्कीम इम्पैक्ट इन इंक्रीजिंग द डिस्ट्रिक्ट इरिगेशन पोटेंशियल पाँच साल में नंदुरबार जिले में चार हजार छह सौ त्रिचालीस जो फार्मर्स है उन्होंने इसका फायदा लिया करीब 4,500 हेक्टर ए माइक्रो इरिगेशन में आ गया जो योजना है पर ड्रॉप मोर क्रॉप में हमें सफलता मिली है और इस साल हम 1,000 फार्मर तक ये योजना लेकर जा रहे हैं प्रधानमंत्री कृषि सिंचाई योजना इज नॉट ओनली हेल्पिंग इन इंक्रीजिंग द परसेंटेज ऑफ इरिगेटेड लैंड इन महाराष्ट्र बट इज ऑल्सो चेंजिंग द लाइफ ऑफ फार्मर्स फॉर द बेटर निशा रानी ए न्यूज मुंबई This is All India Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at the rate AIR News Alerts. In Pakistan, at least 133 people were killed and over 200 injured in two separate attacks on political rallies ahead of the July 25 general election. Terrorists targeted a gathering of the Balochistan Awami Party leader Siraj Raisani in Mustong area in Balochistan province. in which 128 people lost their lives yesterday local media confirmed the death toll quoting provincial home minister aga umar bangal rai the islamic state terror group has claimed responsibility for the attack in another attack a bomb hit an election rally of akram khan durani of mutahida majlis amal in which five persons were killed and over 37 others injured in bannu area of khyber pakhtunkhwa province durani was unhurt in the attack Pakistani authorities arrested former Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif and his daughter Maryam at the Lahore airport last night as they returned to the country from London ahead of the July 25 general elections. According to an airport official, they surrendered before a team of the National Accountability Bureau without any resistance. Here's a desk report. The Sharifs were convicted in absentia by an anti-corruption court on 6th of July in a landmark verdict for not being able to prove a legitimate source for funds used to buy four luxury flats in London. Maryam Nawaz's husband Mohammad Safdar was also sentenced in the case and also held in Adiala jail. Though the Sharifs cannot run in the 25th July election, they felt compelled to return to give a lift to their party. At least 50 people were injured during clashes between PML and workers and police in Pakistan's Punjab province during rally held in connection with the arrival of Sharif and his daughter Aarti Rana news desk The US special counsel has indicted 12 Russian intelligence officers on charges of hacking into the servers of senior democrats including its presidential candidate Hillary Clinton in 2016 The indictment came yesterday ahead of US President Trump's crucial meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin in Helsinki in Finland on Monday Back home in Madhya Pradesh Chief Minister Shivraj Singh Chauhan is embarking on a 55 day long Jan Aashirwad yatra from Ujjain today to seek blessings of the common people ahead of the assembly polls later this year the journey will cover all 230 assembly constituencies of the state a report the yatra will be flag up from Ujjain by BJP president Amit Shah he will also address a public meeting on the occasion the yatra will culminate in Bhopal on September 25th he will visit the state for 55 days in two phases and get public meeting through more than 700 rallies the first phase of the journey will start today while the second phase will start from the Bayar on July 18 two vehicles are converted into chariots for the yatra and during the journey the chariot will work as home and office for the chief minister Sanjeev Sharma AIR news Bhopal The most awaited biggest annual festival of the Rath Yatra or Chariot Festival commences in Puri today. More from our correspondent. Servitors will bring the idol of the lords out of the temple in a ceremonial procession and place in the chariots parked outside the temple. Subsequently they will pull the chariots that are the highlights of the entire yatra. Currently the rituals of the lords are going on inside the temple. The administration is expecting about 10 lakh people to take part in the chariot festival. The district administration has banned touching of the deities by the devotees and considered as cognizable offense. Multilayer security arrangements have been made to ensure security during the huge congregation. Sanpatna for AIR news 
Prime Minister Narendra Modi has greeted the people on the occasion of the Rath Yatra. In a tweet, Mr. Modi hoped that with the blessings of Lord Jagannath, India will scale new heights of growth and every Indian will be happy and prosperous. In Gujarat, the Kachi New Year is being observed today. The day is associated with the beginning of rains in Kutch. The Prime Minister has extended his best wishes to the Kachi community on the occasion. And now, news from the world of sports. Olympic silver medalist P.V. Sindhu will play her women's singles semi-final of Thailand Open badminton tournament in Bangkok today. She takes on Gregoria Mariska Tunjung of Indonesia. Sindhu entered the semi-finals of the Thailand Open for the first time, defeating Malaysia Sonia Chi in straight games yesterday. In the Wimbledon Tennis Championships, Kevin Anderson of South Africa sailed into the final of the men's singles, defeating John Isnail of America in a record-breaking semi-final last night. The match lasted for 6 hours and 35 minutes before Anderson came through 7-6, 6-7, 6-7. 6-4, 26-24. Meanwhile, the other semi-final between Rafael Nadal and Novak Djokovic was suspended after three sets and will resume today. Three-time Wimbledon champion Djokovic is ahead 6-4, 3-6, 7 The match will be completed before the women's singles final between American Serena Williams and Germany's Angelique Kerber. In FIFA World Cup, England and Belgium will play each other for the bronze medal bout at St. Petersburg today. Both the teams have already met during the group stage on 28th June, in which the Belgium won. Today's match tends to be a high-scoring fixture with each of the last four winners scoring three goals. It is also another chance for England captain Harry Kane and Belgium's Romelu Lukaku to add to their goals tally to stay in the race for the Golden Boot Award. And in cricket, India will take on England in the second ODI of the three-match series at Lords today. The match will begin at 3.30 this afternoon. Tripti Shivastav, Sports Desk. And now for a look at today's newspapers for the major stories. It's over to Abhishek Kumar. Thank you, Sanjay. The arrest of former Pakistan Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif and his daughter Maryam as they landed in Pakistan on a flight from Abu Dhabi dominates front page in most papers. The DNA reports Nawaz, Maryam held in Lahore. Two had been given prison sentence on graft charges. The Hindu says Sharif, Maryam held in Lahore. Elections have lost credibility, says former PM. Massive security put in place. Internet cut. Taking note of two separate bomb explosions at two political rallies, the Hindustan Times writes, 133 killed in twin park bombings. Former Jammu and Kashmir Chief Minister Mehbooba Mufti's comments about her former alliance partner, the BJP, are prominently noticed in the press. The Asian Age writes, Mehbooba wants BJP against bed to break her party, says militancy will increase. The papers suggest that these comments come in the backdrop of some legislators of her own party speaking out against her. The Supreme Court's observations on the central government's plan to monitor online content by setting up social media hubs in each district get wide traction in the press. The pioneer writes, SC Red Flags Center's data monitoring plan says move to track online content will make us surveillance state. And while on the subject of social media, the Hindu takes note of what it calls a Twitter purge, which will cost Indian political leaders lakhs of followers. The paper writes, Modi loses 2 lakhs, Rahul 13,000. More to follow as social media side gears up to delete bot accounts. India's decision to go ahead with the purchase of the S-400 Triumph air defense missile systems from Russia despite the threat of U.S. sanctions is widely reported in the press. The Times of India writes, India will go ahead with Russia Triumph deal, says Sita Raman. And finally, can you imagine whales, sharks and turtles in the desert district of Jaisalmer in Rajasthan? Well, recent findings by paleontologists seem to suggest just that. The DNA reports 47 million year old fossils of whale recovered from Rajasthan's Jaisalmer. The paper adds other findings include shark teeth, crocodile teeth and turtle bones, suggesting that this area was under the sea in prehistoric times. And with that, it's back to you, Sanjay. Thank you, Abhishek. That was a look at today's newspapers for the major stories. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi begins his two-day visit to eastern Uttar Pradesh today to launch several development projects in Azamgarh, Varanasi and Mirzapur districts. Defence Minister Nirmala Sitaraman says S-400 Triumph missile deal with Russia will go ahead despite US sanctions. In Pakistan, at least 133 people killed and over 200 injured in two separate attacks on political rallies in Baluchistan and Pakhtunkhwa ahead of the 25 July general elections. Pakistani authorities arrest former Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif and his daughter Maryam on corruption charges. And in, in sports, PV Sindhu to play women's single semi-finals of Thailand Open World Tour Badminton Super 500 tournament in Bangkok and in Wimbledon Tennis Championships Kevin Anderson sails into final of men's singles, defeating John Isner in a record-breaking semi-final. And with that, we end the morning news. Have a nice day.